हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल गैमा डाई गैमा सो आई थाट इनफ विद ऑल दीज प्रूफ लेट्स डू अ नाइस कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस इंटीग्रल सो विद दैट इन माइंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट so like always i'm going to call the problem integral i and it's defined as integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx divided by gamma of 1 minus e to the ix now since there can't be much done at this point the only logical thing to do is noticing the this um exclusive exponential part over here and it's not an a regular exponential it's an exponential raised to this imaginary unit i so it will be a good idea to let z equal e to the i x because now dz is i times e to the i x dx so our integral i becomes integral of well dx is just dz divided by i times well z z to the ix so z and we still have gamma of 1 minus z and now for the upper and lower bound so when x is 0 e to the 0 is 1 and when you have 2 pi in place of x you have e to the i 2 pi so now i want to use euler's formula to get cosine of 2 pi plus i times sine of 2 pi so uh, well cosine of 2 pi is just 1 and sine of any integral multiple of pi is 0 so even when you plug in 2 pi in place of x you get 1 now here's a here's a slight problem if you're one of those conventional guys who's just done like the fundamental theorem of calculus you may say that well a definite integral with the same upper and lower bounds should result in zero right but here's where you're wrong here's the catch because e to the i times some variable actually denotes a rotation of that angle that's basically multiplied by i on the complex plane so e to the i x is a rotation by an angle of x on the complex plane to to give some complex number z1 of magnitude 1 because uh, the the constant that's multiplied by e with e to the i x is 1 because the general form of any complex number in a in the polar form is r times e to the i theta where theta is the amount by which you rotate on uh you know with respect to the real axis on the complex plane and r is just the magnitude of that complex number z1 or z that you obtain on that rotation so in a, in this case r r is 1 so it's a rotation but but now notice when x is 0 you're starting from here and then x is 2 pi so which means a rotation of 2 pi is basically a rotation of a full circle which will bring you back to the the starting point from where you started so it's a it's a full circle rotation on the complex plane this integral so it's not actually a linear integral where you can just do you know um upper bound minus lower bound of the anti derivative and you'll get a zero this is actually a contour it's it's actually a contour integral of dz divided by iz times gamma of 1 minus z and this contour is actually what i would be interested in drawing so uh, the contour to be more detailed Look something like this. 
so uh, to be more accurate with my drawings the contour looks something like this here you have the real axis here is the imaginary axis fair enough and this is actually a circle of radius 1 because as I said the the r the radius associated with e to the i x in this case is 1 so you start with this point and you go full circle and you arrive back at the same point so that's the contour and the, and the function that is being integrated along this contour is basically uh, um, let's include the i as well so 1 over i z times gamma of 1 minus z that's the function that's being integrated along this contour so now what, what are we going to do we have a contour integral is there is there a better way of tackling this well for starters what we can do is use something that's called the residue theorem so what that allows us to do is if you have some contour integral of a fun complex function f of z dz that is just equal to 2 pi i times the sum of residues at all the poles of, of f of z placed inside the contour at poles inside the contour of the function f of z and basically poles are those values where the function f of z will blow to infinity that's basically when the denominator will become zero or have an un undefined value so in this case there are two places where the denominator can become zero or undefined so looking at f of z over here we, we have two cases so case number one is when gamma of 1 minus z will equal gamma of 0 because gamma of 0 is undefined because that will be something like minus 1 factorial which is quite undefined unless you were to go into like analytic continuation but that's far fetched and beyond the scope of this integral so to ensure that happens z will have to become 1 and now here's the problem here's the problem that because z is always 1 on this contour because this has a radius of 1 right so if you define any complex number any complex number say z z2 the mod of this complex number will always be 1 because it's on this contour that is in the shape of a unit circle so on this contour every time gamma of 1 minus z will be undefined so we'll have poles along always on the contour you know all over this circle the poles will trace out a circle actually and we don't like that because for the residue theorem we need we need the poles we need the residue of the poles inside the contour and here we have it on the path usually what what we do is when we have a uh, poles on a on a contour we try to skip them so if, if our contour was like a like a semicircle and if there was like a pole at one we would you know just try to hop over it and have a like a like a circle with radius epsilon in the limit epsilon goes to zero but here we can't do that right because all the points are on the con all the points on this contour will will be candidate poles so what we do is what I'm gonna do is actually have a slight modification in place so this is our contour what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have another contour and, and forgive my bad drawing skills here that um, we're basically going to have and assume this is a circle you know what there's no need to pretend that the previous diagram was perfect i just drew a better one so consider this inner uh, white circle we have so instead of going along this contour like our 
plan was originally we're going along this contour and assume that there is a difference of epsilon between the the radii of both these contours so now if the radius of the red contour was 1 then the radius of the white contour is 1 minus epsilon okay so let's integrate along this contour now so uh, we can have the limit as this epsilon goes to zero because that wasn't our original contour we can always have limits and make an assumption that uh, you know gamma is not going to be having an argument of zero along this lesser white contour along this limit as epsilon goes to zero along this white contour i don't know what call it w for white contour of f of z dz okay so that solves the problem of gamma being zero so this thing is solved we don't need to worry about this and we indeed don't need to worry about this this is because now if you take look take a look at this white contour the points where gamma is undefined are going to lie on the red contour here outside and that's well outside this white contour so we don't need to worry about that we only need to be worried about the poles inside the contour okay so op so case number one is solved case number two is lo looking at the denominator another place this contour uh, this function can become undefined is when z e is equal to zero just the regular z no, no gammas just z equals zero and that point is well inside our contour it's over here at the origin and since that point is well inside our contour we can directly uh, find the pole, find the residue at g equals zero. So since it's it's a it's a simple pole, we can just find the residue in in this way. So the limit as the z goes to zero of z times f of z. So we have limit as z goes to 0 of z times uh, 1 over i z times gamma of 1 minus z so the z's will cancel out with dignity the limit as z goes to 0 of 1 over i times the gamma of 1 minus z so when you basically plug in 0 for z to basically evaluate the limit you have gamma of 1 which is 0 factorial which is indeed 1 so you have 1 over i and that's the sum of residues only one residue and that's why the sum of all residues inside the contour is 1 over i which is negative i and now going back to our limit as epsilon goes to 0 of our contour integral over w of f of z dz is still equal to if you basically try to plug in epsilon equals zero you have contour integral over the red the red contour that we started with f of z dz and for which i had written down 2 pi i times sum of residues as the result of the residue theorem but since we know the sum of residues is negative i i times i is negative one and an another negative will be just one so we have two pi as the answer so this integral just turned out to be two pi isn't that it isn't that a fabulous result all this work and it amounts to two pi and this is actually can be expressed as one of the representations of pi using complex valued functions and contour integrals so half of this is equal to pi dividing both sides by 2 so that's another fabulous result and i hope you like this video guys and i hope you understood this intuition behind having another contour as epsilon and not just this direct one 
hope you enjoyed the video and learned as much as i did and so i think that's it for this video please like share and subscribe to my channel guys recommend me to your friends uh spread the word of gamma diagram in the math community and uh, in the meantime stay home stay safe keep doing math and uh, peace out signing off